We're underway on a server which players are not picking 400. It seems EU West is still in the wars. Yeah, it's uh, looking a bit better here. Interesting to see that resolution is going to that uh, mid lane because I believe all of the matches they played at this current roster, he's been playing off lane. Correct. And General's been going to that mid lane, so I guess it just could be a decision about how the lane's going to be handled better. That Queen of Pain and Spirit Breaker combined could go against Broodmother, but better. Queen of Pain is a hero that I've seen do reasonably well in the safe lane against off lane Brood before. Um, but they they couldn't have intended to really put Lena in the off lane. In the uh, unless unless she was meant to go with the Spirit Break. Actually, I mean, we can't actually know what the original is looking like he's going to start in the mid lane. Um, with Queen of Pain holding that dust, definitely the aim is to lane up against the Brood. Mm -hmm. Is that actually general, though? Is, that, uh, is flow actually general? Would be the question. I, I don't know. Well, top lane fight's going to be That's kicking off. Good. No fear. Actually going for that brain tap early on, so there's no setup or control with the Nightmare as they battle for that rune. It will go that way if Miracle, but Miracle, there's that nuke damage kicking in, but Resolution getting beaten down. Sign with that score shirt also down on the field, giving him that sustain and burn across all of OG. They want to get a little bit more, which is going to be moving on to the Night Stalker, and, uh, well, he is going to not get back in time. No fear. That brain sap going to work so heavily. Able to pick three for one in favor of Team Empire. The rune still went the way of the SF, but you just lost three heroes. Yeah, and this is, I think, the start of a story that really favors Empire. I did say during the draft that the best way for Empire to beat OG seems to be to get under their skin from very early on in the game and just, like, stay ahead of them, yeah. keep pressure on them. If OG at any point gets to play their game, dictate the pace of the game, they just seem to be like the the more seasoned, more like refined of the of the two at the moment. Um, but the I mean, let's not let's not overstate the significance of the early kills. As the lane settle down, we'll see over the next few minutes. It might be that the brood lane and the lich lane is just too much. Mm. Um, you know, on the mid lane, crit is actually just starting off with that harassment on resolution, giving Miracle that that oh, little boy. bit of breathing room. Flies in a lot of trouble. That easy attack coming in, no fears, brain sap gave him the life to stand this ground and fight, not only to get that damage into the lich, as he tries to juke it around the tree line, Sam bloody blocking him for a moment, gets the salve off on no fear, just give him a little bit more life back, quickly cancelled out by the void. It still means though that the bane stays alive and they find themselves another kill, now Team Empire in this top lane. Yeah, and one thing that is really bad, Fly's got the... The Frost Blast, actually. I mean, you, you always want the Sacrifice, that's how you start dominating the lane. He took the Frost Blast to try to take the fight, they lost the fight anyway, and they're not actually exerting any control on the lane yet, he's gonna have to wait to get to level 2, which is taking quite some time, he's got, only gonna get there now. He needs to drag this lane back. But, I'm still, like, I'm with you with what you said, like, don't overestimate the amount of kills. Or the effect of these kills early on. I've seen Team Empire have these similar starts. And it's all about the transition into the mid-game, and we've still got a Broodmother taking safe lane farm, soon to have your soul ring up and running. Spirit Break is finding levels, yes, but he's also going to have to rotate out at some point and help out Resolution. Resolution, who can get zoned out just by having a Wyvern kick in, or something like this. Fly with a haste rune, running in through the back, the Light Striker race completely off target, and the Razor from Miracle ensure they've got enough damage to get the quick pick on the Lena. And that lets Fly run himself away from the Bane, who could not reach up in time. But with the charge arriving, the Blink forward still on cooldown, but the Queen of Pain doesn't miss uphill. The charge keeping that vision and Queen of Pain finding the pick. Yeah, Weapon Wise been blinking up and down, like just in the jungle area since the start of the game. I've been trying to figure out what the movements are about, but makes a kill and now looking for another one in the bot lane. Yeah, they got go the Shadow the Strike. Sentry Wall was placed down earlier on, that was meant to be the uh, the early attacker, but now Broodmother just runs himself off, that dust got only a couple of seconds left, but with the extra bash kicking him from the ESB, the Broodmother will be dropping. Yeah, finally getting that bash, and this is this is definitely going to be, if you look at Empire's draft, they're not really kits it up to just sit and lane against Brood all game. Maybe if Queen of Pain was a core, or if Lena gets a lot of farm, they plan to deal with Broodus to kill Brood several times. And so far so good, good start for them. <laughs> But when it comes to farming, look at Miracle CS. He is taking the lead in the game, and that's certainly what OG fans want to see because we've seen time and time again that 
even if a TM is a bit behind, Shadowfiend gets those creeps, then farms those stacks, suddenly gets a few items and starts just controlling the game. Actually, you've noticed that Empire is also watching this stack movement. Crit's got himself uh, being watched by this Observer Ward, so there will be a quad stack to understand when SF moves off the lane. But what can Empire really do about it? Like, are they meant to go over and try and contest the pull? And what do they even do that with? Consequence. Well, they've they've got the spirit breaker, yeah, they've got the quap, so they they they're pretty mobile. If they have is, the is, levels, then it's gonna be a no, it's not. So He's talking about the top lane. Night stock was going to uh, just actually kill off silent. Because if we just hit the night time, and he instantly got aggressive on silent, he can do it again with a scorched earth now timing out, and uh, he maybe he wants to have that uh, that third level up in void. And he just hit level wait. five, and yeah, there it is. The silence already regenerated up quite heavy, heavily, but he can get zoned out of the lane. There's only one armor over on this Doom Bringer, and face boost won't give him the movement speed to get away. So it's just up to a couple of punches here from the Night Stalker, and yep, silent. Underestimating that power of the Night Stalker in the first nighttime phase. Yeah, Queen of Pen was rotating in from behind to try and help, but not gonna get there on time. Not gonna be able to do much anyway. Finds crits instead. Making an ancient stack will get that information. And the role of the support Queen of Pain so far this game, by the way, has been to sneak behind enemy lines, get this ward, sneak behind, get that ward. <laughs> Just like something that most support heroes can't safely do, but Queen of Pain with that blink, you can actually get the wards you wind up early on quite reliably. The only downside is there's, there's no initiation for them. Like you look for something like an Earthshaker to combine up where you get that earlier stun that allows Lena to follow up with the Light Strike Array and the huge amount of damage to find a kill on mid. But they don't really have that level of rotation unless they're going to smoke up no fear. But every time I, I check out this Bane, even with Brain Type, he keeps hitting below 50% of his life. Just no... There's just no aggression that can come from him yet. Moon Meander's been spotted out by a ward, so Empire know that he's here. Resolution is trying to play defensively, but if no one rotates in, they could just dive Resolution and kill him at the tower. He doesn't have any boots yet. I just knew this was coming. Silence, the Void. Uh, Moon's gonna get himself out of this one. The Nightmare's gonna kick in. Now, you've already blinked forward on the Queen of Pain. So, level 3 with a charge coming in, too. This Night Stalker will end up dying. A heavy rotation coming out from Empire. But with that Nether Strike already up from the Spirit Breaker, they just keep going further. The Splinter Blast can't get the kill on the SB, but Lich ensures the kill. Oh, sorry, Lena ensures the kill over on the Lich. But this is that rotation I was talking about. It happens, and then the Brew Mother just starts attacking your bottom tower. It's. I. I I always wonder about this in the early game. Is the trade-off always worth it? Is the juice worth the squeeze? And I'm just so, not certain it is when Empire rotate like this. Because of the way they're drafted in. Uh, the interesting thing there, I think, if there's a four, four hero, or three hero rotation to save the Lena kill Night Stalker... Oh. Yeah, that was, uh, yeah, that was actually very, very easy. That was a simple run down the bottom lane by Moon. And no doubt throwing out a level 4 spawn spidling. The Spirit Breaker was already pretty low, so boom, boom, he's down. I think with the mid rotation, if they only get the Night Stalker, it might not be worth it. Because they actually managed to get the Lich too, it's probably fine. But I think you're right, the, the, the thing that you're gesturing at in general is that kill score can be misleading here. That it feels like Empire have some kind of control of the tempo of the game, but actually OG are getting most of the things they want done in the early game done anyway. Yeah. Exactly what I was pushing for, man. And, and that's that's where Empire kind of need to dictate things a little bit better. And you got this smoke movement into mid, and that's exactly what I wanted to see. The uh, the the nightmare off. The charge is coming out from the Spirit Breaker. There was no way Nightstalker potentially could have stunned him up and stopped this. A miracle with a double raise. He's still going to go down here. They commit four heroes to shutting down this SF, and it's exactly what they have to do. Get the better trade off during the night time. Maybe not the greatest thing. The fact that Lena died, but the Spirit Breaker is becoming a bit a bigger player. Bane's finding his level, so you'll have Fiend's Crypt up shortly. But he's still so, lost the tier 1 tower on bot. And half of the I, life of the tier 2 tower on bot as well. I have a question, because I've not seen this yet, and maybe you have, but... Ask away. We, Silence Doombringer doesn't have Doom. He's level 7. He's had two chances to take it, and... Nope. You know, <laughs> I'm, I'm actually perfectly alright with this. Because I don't think he feels like he's got a chance to get a kill. Like if if you've got a kill, then you like if you've got a, a chance to go for a kill, do it. But right now, if it's a nice stalker that runs at him during nighttime, the nice stalker will tank through his initial doom, and then there's no point to the skill point. 
But if he's well, able to have that fourth point up in Scorched Earth, then I'm okay with it. And he's holding he, on to his extra point now. Yeah, yeah, he's holding the eighth point now. And that's, I think, now that Crits comes to land here, he's got to be thinking, this is ridiculous. A Winter Wyvern at level four or five shouldn't be able to stand and land against me, and Scorched Earth plus Doom should actually make that kill. So I think he'll consider it. If he gets into a position where he can actually go for that move onto the, the Wyvern... And yeah, he's taken the Doom now, so preparing for for the, the possibility of that. Still something interesting, because if you haven't leveled that Doom, you're not able to rotate into lanes and Doom people, you're not able to use it defensively for fight breaks out. Mm -hmm. It's not something I'd seen before, but I, I think your reasoning is is definitely arguable that, um, you know, if you're, if you're not planning to use it, why not just farm better? Why not just survive better? Exactly. Just, uh, it's a bigger advantage for you in the laning phase. You, ne you can never say, like, leveling up Scorch Death is a bad thing. There you go. There it is from Nox. This is the first patch, first game this patch, where Doom has failed the skill Doom at, by level 7. I mean, the the hero is called Doom, right? <laughs> it's like... it, it, it is a critical ability of his. I, I, will not buy, I will not say no to that. But, man, Silent... An experienced player, he knows what he's up to. Yeah, that's. I, I mean, I, I sort of figured this. The, well, the one element is you're not playing to do any onto, and the other is like you have this exact timing planned of these are the items I'm gonna farm before I make a rotation to that place, and at that point I'll want to use my doom. Find um, himself the creep he wanted. He's been walking around with this Sata for a very long time, so he's had the regeneration in the lane to stay alive. Are they? Uh, yeah, there's that charge coming in on the broom. <laughs> Look at the movement speed. Like, it's a phase brood uh, broodmother. They're still going to get the nether strike off, but you've now used that. The broodlings are chasing down into the tree lines, revealing out the Queen of Pain's position. The raids was way too far off target, but the broodlings keep the vision up. So the Queen of Pain will die. The Spirit Breaker barely TPs out. That raids a fraction of a second too late. will end up being a brood for a support Queen of Pain trade-off. But they instantly want to try and attack on top. Now, this Dire Observer Ward did scout out the fact the trees went down, but they trigger out the darkness. The chase coming in, and no fear is just on void away from death. He couldn't get the brain zap off. Crit, however, will be a Laguna Blader down, so there is tip for tap coming out on the top lane. And the charge is still not tracking the Night Stalker. I don't think he'll go through with this one, though. Yeah, just seeing where he's moving. No support that can follow him to the other side of the lane. Like, if you had the, if you had the Queen of Pain up with, like, a Sonic Wave ready to go in the neighborhood, I would be for it, but she was back at base. So there's no way for her to keep up with this Spirit Breaker. Well, Empire attempting to defend their mid tower. Not wanting to give Shadow Fiend a free tower. There's no level 6 yet on Ben, but sleep. Die. Even if you Nightmare over in the middle lane, Resolution, the Lich Holly from Fly, instantly being committed, will head back over to Miracle, who's just wheeling back from a bash, but he gets the mech charge off. They need to commit and get this kill. The one shots make it so difficult. They chase all the way over this hillside just to ensure the kill on the SF, but the Spirit Breaker dying to the tower. He's about to charge himself away. Couldn't do it in time. The Broodmother, the insatiable hunger, cannot be quenched. Will be no tell, helping to wipe out all of Team Empire, the SF, the only casualty of war, and that Doom, as we said, very ineffective. Very early yeah. on. It's, it's something that we've uh, seen from OG several times, I think, recently. You know, you can gank our players, but when you gank Miracle, like, he's, he, he's the main man, right? He's... <laughs> gank him, we're all gonna come. You better be ready to kill all of us, and Miracle just picked up his mech, kept him alive really long. Unfortunately for Empire, Spirit Breaker didn't have his ulti just yet, so it was like a few seconds of cooldown, and Ben wasn't level 6 yet, and so I think if they manage to, to wait an extra 30 seconds, get the Spirit Breaker ulti and the Ben Fiend's grip, they can make the kill really quickly, but, you know, sensing that they only had the timing window then, as they were losing resolution just above, and forcing it and end up being wiped, so... I don't know, at, at this point, whatever relative advantage Empire have had in this early game, I feel like they don't have. I feel like they're just solidly behind now. Well, the grants will support your logic, man. 4,000 experience advantage going the way of OG, just over 5k in the net worth, and about to skyrocket on that net worth too, because you've got the Broodmother farming up the Dire Jungle, so he's taking all those resources away from OG, and the top tier 1 town being forced down by the SF, and it does pose the question, can Empire fight into OG? When you got that mech up and running, when you're able to have Curse, the Lich Ulti, Insatiable Hunger from the Broodmother kept no tail alive on a bee stick of life. They, they just couldn't finish the job. Uh, uh, can they Can they even fight OG? They're trying to dive crits, but they're not going to find him. He's he, he. There were some pings coming out from Moonmeander actually saying, hey, they're in our jungle, and then crit moved off to the left. 
And he's just gonna keep spamming those Splinter Blasts from a safe distance, really being a nuisance. Like, he doesn't expose himself at all, but he stops the push of four heroes, nonetheless. I like how, too, uh, you've just got Moon Meander. He's waiting, just patiently, for anyone from Empire to rotate up. No one's coming. So, what are you gonna do? Keep Broodmother farming up the Dire Jungle. Keep the SF taking out the top tier 2 tower, so Empire attempted some pressure in the mid. But they can't claim a T1 tower, they've just lost their two towers on the top lane, and we're 14 minutes in, and they only have one remaining outer tower. This is so problematic. Radiance also because the amount of money that OG get is getting. The SF mid game that keeps being that keeps looking so good is looking even better now. As Miracle has a full Sanj completed, he's got 8.2k net worth, the Doombringer is a full 2,000 behind him, and this Lena is over 3,000 behind the SF. Just haven't quelled him, and they tried. They really did try. Yeah, it's, uh... I mean, honestly, this, I've been saying since the start of the game, when the game becomes this way, OG wins it. And we, we've actually got a big enough sample of these two teams playing against each other recently to say that. That once OG are controlling the game in a structured way, they probably just don't win these games. So I, I think there's a huge amount of pressure on them right now, and they'll know because they've been in this situation so many times this week that they'll know what's coming. They'll know that OG are, are going to you know, set themselves up, position correctly, and not going to make too many mistakes. You want to add another item to your to your stat list right now? The Lotus Orb, first major item for a brood by the 15 minutes in. The Chain's in a little bit of trouble, the Doom already out of fact. The Lotus Orb instantly reflects it, so Silent Dooms himself. The Lich ulti combined with the Curse does terrible, terrible damage to Team Empire. Silent's forced back off the lines. You got the Spirit Breaker on the front lines, but the Urn Charge is ticking him down with the Spiders right behind him. That will be the death of the Spirit Breaker. And Team Empire have initiated as hard as they possibly could. The mech repairs most of the damage, and they're all fighting with frost armor as well. That's plus, that's plus 13 armor to the basic 9 on, the, on Miracle. You can't even inflict damage. Yeah, and that's that Doom that we were asking about earlier, why didn't he level it? What At this point, I feel like it did just as much to the Doombringer as it did to the Shadow Fiend, and almost as if no could have scripted it. Like, just putting that buff onto Miracle right before the Doom went off. Really nice timing on that, and... If it doesn't happen, like, maybe there's a chance Empire feel more confidence and, like, actually pursue chasing down that fight while Shadow Fiend's removed from it with the Doom. But with Doombringer being controlled himself, but, yeah, just nothing to get out of it for them. What a timing. What an item. Recalling the Lincolns before, that would have been our block a bit. When you got something like a Doom that you could just return. It's a level 2 Doom as well. Silent just can't do anything. All that sustain that you look for from him. Yeah, he's got Scorched Earth. Uh, but scorched Earth off. Die now. Yeah. He should. He should. The Lotus Orb? He'll put, he'll put it up for the moment, trying to reflect whatever he possibly can, but they'll just beat him down the old-fashioned way. Queen of Pain so, did end up Shadow Striking herself, but that's all. So this is pretty great, actually, right? Because we've seen a very clear illustration of the differences between going Lotus Orb and going Lincolns. The Lotus Orb, we saw what it does when it works, but if he has a Lincolns, he doesn't die there, because Spirit Breaker can't charge you when you have Lincolns. Simple as that, and that's what starts the gank. So it's a sign that Noteo feels his team's already in control of the game, that he can go for the Lotus Orb and push through. There's no reason to be defensive at this point, and sure, he might die every once in a while, but the Lotus Orb's going to mean that they're, they're definitely going to win those fights, because there's not really much to control the, the Shadow Fiend if he's Lotus Orbed. Like, what, what do you do? You can't Fiend's grip him, that's going to cancel itself straight away. Uh, Spirit Breaker's going to sort himself out, Doom's going to sort... Uh, like, which of the heroes on Empire control Shadow Fiend if Lotus Orb's on him? Uh, none. Absolutely none. The hilarious thing is, too, that the SF's walking around with, what, roughly, what was that, 3,000 net worth, which isn't being used by him. So you have, you have moments in the fights where you're like, okay, well, Miracle looks, looks strong. Like, while his net worth is over 10,000, it's actually only just over, what, 7,000 currently on the hero. You add that SMY, which is now flying out to him. Empire is even in, is in even more trouble to try and kill off this SF. And the Frost Armor keeps buffing them up. This Lich keeps finding more and more levels. Yeah, and Empire now... I mean, going for another aggressive move, this is... I mean, fa fair enough, this is how they know. When they do win games in this matchup, it's it's from the aggression. But it's close to having backfired enough to, to be beyond repair at this point. And 
they need to get some kind of successful series of pickoffs. The one on Notail was a start, but it needs to be more than just one. It needs to be three or four, if not a team fight or two, to put them back into a decent position in this game. Spirit Breakers on the charge again. They just lost their wards. The, obser the sentry wards were placed down by Notail. He's got them all through the dire jungle. Then the, then the Broodlings, they just sit over there and they take out the obs of Team Empire. Team Empire are actually completely blind on the map, and it's about to become even worse. The Yanks is 500 gold away from the Night Stalker, so there's no way to properly initiate in onto OG. Is even tankier on the Night Stalker, so the Doom won't help him. A very smart blink away, just in time by the Queen of Pain. Yeah, and that's only going to work for a little while because there's 400 gold on Night Stalker to Aghanim Scepter, at which point that kind of blink away would not actually save you anyway. Are we looking um, at double Lotus? Maybe. You're flying. talking about the plate mail? Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm not because I don't know what else he would he would purchase with with the uh, with the plate mail that would really make the lich. Yeah, I mean, Shiva's is always good at items to have on your team, but you're right. So it liches don't buy assault curses, and he could just. I mean, Lotus Orb feels like it actually provides more utility, even as a second one, than than a Shiva's does in this game. Um, I mean, it just just the fact that he has the Midas and he's just scaling like everyone else is. Just look at him. He's. It feels like if the game keeps progressing this way, he's going to overtake Resolution's Lena in maybe 10 minutes' time. And when the enemy lich, when there's four heroes on the enemy team overtaking your your mid hero, that's problems. I mean, that's that's a sign of the times. Yeah. It's, uh, this is a rough, rough game for Team Empire, but maybe they can turn the unlucky score 13 13 into something positive as they group themselves up as five. There is a smoke on the Queen of Pain, which is what I thought they were going to go for, but they're holding out from it for now. They she also be very concerned. Like we did just enter nighttime again, and now it's OG. In fact, who smoke up? So the split blast in mid, but Empire no ping for it, and they're going to call for a two minute break for now. So we get we get a moment just to get our bearings and think about what Team Empire are really facing. The uh, Queen of Pain also just recently finished Mech. So I think, as far as items go. It's one of the big pickups for Empire in this game. It's one of the big timings that could turn things around. If you, especially if you get good value of the mech, healing three or four people, it suddenly r takes away a huge amount of damage that's been dealt. It's, you know, counters all three raises, for example. It could. It's in the right position and th the right sequence of events. Um, I, I, jazz, the ports. I tried to come in tonight being a lot more positive towards Team Empire. I, I really wish these guys well with their new roster. Uh, been a big fan of Resolution for a very, 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 very long time. And this game, like, just after the first five minutes, you knew, even with kills going their way, that they're going to be basically trying to paddle up Creek. It's going to be a rough run for them. And even with yeah. a farmed up Doombringer, when you have double Lotus Orbs, you basically... Uh, the, old, the old phrase was with the Doombringer, you eliminate one hero from the team fight. Now Doom eliminates himself. He can't yeah, do it. Like, there's, there's, there's just nothing he can do. And with the Lotus Orbs up too, Lena's going to be scared as well. There's just too much control that OG's got. They get through the team fights now, um, the vision game, the damage output, as well as the push power, because they've got an early game Broodmother with good momentum. And this yeah, Broodmother's no. not even one of those heroes which you say, oh my lord, this is, uh, this is a push-style hero. It's actually a team-fight-style hero because of the Lotus Orb build early on. So one of the interesting things about Broodmother in particular, being the Lotus Orb holder, is that usually if you... Oh, hang Hello. on. Fight's going to break us. Silence over on the Queen of Pain. The Lich is going to not bounce out. In fact, Queen of Pain going to take the damage and crit. Well, there's your Fiend's Grip. It holds the Lich out. The Lotus Orb wasn't up in time. So it didn't reflect out that Fiend's Grip. And you've got the kill over on the Lich. Miracle doomed up and there was no way to return that one. So Silent, this time he can be a, he can be a fighter. Miracle going to get Lacuna Bladed down. It's a two-for-one trade-off. The Curse will be able to control up a couple of the heroes here of Team Empire. But they want the Vision over on crit. So then they can get that charge in for Flo. And Flo, he's managed to get it. It was the observed ward in the lane, uh, in on the on the riverside, and now Flo looking for the bash as well. One brain sap will do the work, and that's what Team Empire needed. OG to get over aggressive, thinking they had the the complete advantage with that Aghanim scepter, and then they get caught out. I, I wonder if I mean we don't like to talk about these things, but I wonder if the pause like just kind of threw off OG because the fight broke out 
I mean, actually, both teams were very close to each other before the pause, and they didn't really necessarily know that. <laughs> Notel wasn't nearby, as you said. He got there on time to Lotus Orb only after the Fiend's Group had gone off. And I mean, if you're going for the Lotus Orb build on Bridmill, it's it's not like if you don't go to the fight space creates it. You, your team lost a fight, but you're pushing with your necros or you're pushing like. The, the item only gives dividends if you're at the fight and doing things with it. And I was actually going to say right before the fights, one of the nice things about having on Broodmother is usually when a team has to deal with Lotus Orb, they can try and just get vision of the hero with it and then identify when they're going to be able to use the debuff. But you you never see the Brood coming. So if he's around in that fight, maybe things are slightly different. And OG get themselves caught out in a position where they're outnumbered. And that's that's exactly what Empire are looking for in this game. Empire, Empire, if they can consistently do that, especially now they've picked up the rush, take two or three more fights where they just out, have the, the numbers advantage, they, they can come back into this game for sure. Well, it's, it's the perfect way to do it. You're also behind so far on the net worth. It was, like, it was, it's so valuable to win a fight like that. Now it's only about 2.5k net worth advantage for OG, and the experience is almost zeroed out. It's been that heavy of a swing for Team Empire because they also took Roshan directly after it. The Doombringer... Now it's a little bit more control during team fights. Great up against the Spartlings have both Scorched Earth as well as the Shiva's Guard popping. He's all about the auras, both Vlad's as well as Shiva's being purchased up. It's almost reminiscent of the way Artstyle used to play this safe lane Doombringer, where they get the early Vlad's on the Doom, jump in for the Roshan, take it, then move on and just keep pushing, using the aura to do most of the work every time. Yeah, it's it's scary. I mean, and and... We get to the point where Doombringer is about his auras, right? He's about the Scorched Earth and the auras and the spam level deaths, just as much as he is about the Doom. So yeah, you've well done. You've got a, a Lotus Orb, which deals with one of my skills, but I'm building myself to be like this walking fountain Radiant that just gives everyone auras and sprays fire everywhere. Um, Radiant structure and I, I do feel... Maybe maybe something that is still looking very good for OG is that they've got this Night Stalker Agnum Scepter Radiant gem combo, and so... It shouldn't be caught unawares that easily now, from here on out, with that kind of map control. For now, Empire, recognizing that they don't, with that Aegis and with the comeback they've gotten, they can just group up and push some towers, because they know that OG don't want to fight into the Aegis. Yeah. And they also know that OG's not going to get a good trade out in the lanes. Like, you're pushing in the tier, the, to the top towers, you're taking them out. Uh, what's OG doing? They're pushing the creep wave into your tier 3 towers, but they won't be able to reach the high ground and do enough damage because, as you mentioned previously, the Broodmother didn't pick up the the Necro book. So there's no huge amount of pressure coming out from him or an early Desolator or something like that on the OG heroes. There are a lot more passive in their builds. The S and Y mech coming out from SF. He just stands and fights during the engagements. The same thing for the Dice Talker. He's more vision and a couple of voids. Wyvern requires Empire to be out of position to do his work because he doesn't have that Blink Dagger or Force Staff yet, and looks like he's actually building into Glimmer Cape for now. So it's... It's the perfect time for Empire. They read the situation well, and now they're starting to really level everything up. The gold is coming back their way. The experience is starting to swing back the way of OG again. But you finish up your Trankle... Your, your, sorry, your Trankles. Your, your Greaves over on the, on the Queen of Pain. She's ready to dispel whatever she possibly can and give that advantage during the fight. Resolution has initiation through his Shadow Blade. With the immortality of the Aegis, I'm loving this from Empire. They just have to keep their wits about them, and get a solid fight, and then they control the the tempo of this game. I I think that um, going forward, Miracle Shadow Fiend will be the most compelling carry force in this game. I mean, there's no like genuine carry on Empire. There's things that have carrying aspects about them, but they're not really like hard hitters or scalers. And I think it depends on how well Empire control Miracle, and alternatively how well OG protect Miracle. So the timings of Lotus Orbs and Glimmer Capes and Old Embraces, things like that. Uh, is Miracle going to be controlled by Empire, or is Miracle going to control Empire? That's that's kind of going forward, I feel like, how the rest of the significant fights will be, de will be determined in this game. I'd also have in the back of my mind just what uh, is the trade-off for Empire to take these fights. The Broodmother's sitting on the top lane at the moment. Now, we mentioned that there is no real pushing power coming out from the Brood. Uh, Empire take a Tier 2 tower, but you're okay with this. The top lane's going to keep pressuring into the Tier 3 tower, so how does Empire find the space to say, you know, we can push this out? Like, you're frost armoring up towers, making it even more difficult to just finish the job. Brood, okay, they're just charging up to the Spilings on top. Yeah, this is the decision I was wondering how long it takes. 
Empire have to fall back because they're worried about the split push. Yeah, and it's, uh, it's a problem because, as I've said several times already this game, we know that OG are, are the team that's likely to win when Empire start playing on OG's terms, when they start reacting to what OG's doing and playing by their rules. But they've lost that gap. The Aegis is gone now. They, they, they got a huge chunk out of winning that fight, taking the Aegis. They got a bunch of towers. They've pretty much equalized the game. But as, as the game stabilizes, it does feel like OG are sort of... Uh, in a commanding position in terms of dictating the terms, and this fly, by the way, is finishing a second load assault because he's picked up that perseverance just a short bit away from the, the recipe. Okay, so he gets load assault. We get a Lincoln Spear build uh, kicking in for the SF, and it's a Scardi as the second major item for the Broodmother. Yeah, it's, it's, interestingly enough, I, I was wondering if Brood might go Lincoln's on top of load assault, but does, it does feel like maybe too much utility and too little actual do things. Yeah. And I know it's... Do you know about the the famous uh, unnamed Russian guru who taught everyone to play Broodmother? Um, there's, there was some Reddit thread about how when Broodmother exploded into the professional yeah, scene... It was, it was the guy that trained Mag. Like, I, yeah, yeah. I, I, read, I read about this after ESL, ESL1 New York. Yeah, exactly. So there's a guy who, who trained Mag and DK Phobos, like gave them lessons on how to play Brood, and he said, one of the things that he said is that almost every game, Scotty is an item you want to buy on Broodmother. We don't actually see it that much in professional games, but, but honestly, for me personally, despite the fact that that guy's not a professional player, he's like probably the foremost expert on Broodmother in the world, as far as we know. So I'm, I'm going to go with Scotty's a good buy as like a generic what, Broodmother's going to tank up and fight. It? Like, is, it, is it meant to be so the Broodmother is able to be Stronger during the fights, have something up against these BKB heroes all the time. With the slow, like, what, what's the I, what's the method behind it? I, yeah, I think the explanation is to make Broodmother consistently relevant in a fight. So it's not just like you do things when your ulti's on, or you do things while you have Orchid cooldown, or you do things during BKB. It's that you can kind of be annoying enough to go in and out and slow people and threaten to kill people, while at the same time being tanky enough that you don't just die every time you reveal. So it, it's just a uh, that that general approach that's developed over the last year in Dota about just building stats is actually very appropriate for Brood. Plus, the slow stacks with Brood slow, so got a, a lot of slow and control and miss percentage on whoever you're attacking, and they're going to struggle oh, to fight back. The well. curse resolution. I think they knew it was coming, but still, their positioning man a three man curse happened. Silent will get mowed down, and OG they were looking for the opening. They thought it was going to be resolution out in the mid lane, and there's uh, no buyback on either of them. You're right, there isn't. And look at the split now. Brood heads towards the bottom lane. They let SF take care of the mid. Dire structures so you get split fire. damage and make it so Team Empire can't just Dyer's fight on one front. They have to fight on multiple fronts. Throw the fortification out. This OG are actually, the way they're positioning for this push, they're positioned very defensively because they don't know that there's no buybacks. They have to assume there's buybacks. As it turns out, Doombringer bought most of a BKB um, in his stash. No fear. Silenced up. There's your charge coming in from Flo. The Splinter Blast going to bounce out, but no, Bane still able to survive for this one. The mid tower's being worked down. Queen of Pain yeah, decided not to come and join the fight. She's still pushing out that top lane, but you're losing your mid racks. She knows it's pointless. Okay. <laughs> yeah, uh, finish the job. There goes your melee racks. She realized there was no point just trying to fight in the mid. It would have just been her death anyway. So she blinks, she TPs. The vision's there, and will this done happen? Not in time. Yeah, so, just the nick of time there. I think this shows us something so important about information because I, I genuinely believe that if you told OG after those two pickoffs, hey, they, they can't buy back, that's, that's at least one set of racks. It's probably two. But they start, they, they approach the push so defensively because there's no way for them to know that there aren't any buybacks. And they figured it out when they when they went for that bit of aggression diving up the hill. Hey, hang on, if there were buybacks, people would be buying back now. And then they've decided, okay, let's just force down this Rax. But the Queen of Pain actually gets a decent trade purely based on the fact that there's a, a, a kind of lack of information on the on the side of OG. And it's you can't criticize them for it, for playing according to what they know. They know there's a chance of buyback. They don't want to throw a huge fight like they did earlier on, which cost them a huge chunk of a control they had in the game. So something I think to, to keep in mind, which is which is very significant in deciding uh, raxing in, in a lot of series and even team fights is that we as casters or observer spectators have a lot more information than the players have a lot of the time. That is true. We have everything at our disposal thanks to Valve. Hoochie. 
Well, they're gonna get that information. They see resolution. Crit goes instantly for the curse. They want this leaner down. The Lich Holly is gonna bounce up and over towards Flo, but resolution, the defensive Yule Step to just allow Miracle to line up for the pop, which is gonna be through his Requiem. The Gemma True Sight lost for Team Empire as well, so they can't keep the control, and there's no buybacks for resolution or for the Bane. And this will be the end of the mid racks. Even without the creep wave there, they can still fight through that backdoor regeneration. And the creep wave's on its way. So they can just rotate themselves down to the bot lane. The spiraling's already pushing out the lane as well. So it won't be too far away. Backdoor is now off, so Empire come up. And I don't, yeah, Empire will, will need to initiate just before Lena respawns. I think their axes might be dead by then already. I mean, if they re if they initiate when she's got about five seconds left, they could maybe still take a fight. OG is waiting for it. You can see what they're doing. And here they go. That's the charge, pops the Lincolns, and... Again, it's it's about signaling, right? You, you use the charge, you pop the Lincolns, and that says to OG, Okay, we're coming at you. And OG, I don't think they have the option to, you know, just like make any assumptions. Rather play it safe. Fine, let's pull out. Like I, I think on balance they could get those raxes and come out of there alive. But, but why take the risk, even if it is a small risk? Yeah. I did an amazing global cancel against Lincoln Spear. Take something like charge. Yeah, it's also interesting the interaction between charge and Lotus Orb. Like for making someone charge at you. I would love to see that from one side of the map to the other. Empire, they don't want to see this, however. Miracle, well, actually, maybe they do. The Doom from Sun doesn't come off in time. Miracle, you're stopping towards the air, but the timing over on that stun. And now Miracle, protected up by the Lotus Orb. Resolution got perfectly cursed. The Lich Holy bouncing around inside the Empire heroes. Silence forced back out of the fight. Miracle still survives. He's totally very, very low. See Silent down. The Doom will finally tick him out. And Empire actually get the upper hand in the fight. They're looking for their fault, and they should be out of claim it, charging into that Ninth Stalker. He can say goodbye to that gem of his and four heroes of OG. And what a time to win the fight! What a time to actually get another follow up. Resolution was down here battling up against the Brood Mother. Can they actually make it five for five? Four stuff away. The charge is coming in right now from Flo, bashing into the Brood Mother. The control is there, and there is your brain sap. They take both gems, they take all of OG, and now they can also take Roshan. They might I don't, I don't know if you a actually... Little bit, little bit about home, however, but it's a double damage rune. They could do it nice and quick. Did you see for like for like a split second there, um, sort of break a charge, brood mother, and the brood, like, the hero stopped because I was about to turn around and charge. And notice how it's actually right-click again to cancel it. It wasn't, wasn't that noticeable, but it did happen. <laughs> um, but yeah, in discussing the actual fights, I want to go back to the, the analysis I made earlier because I, I, I think I still maintain that, that... What happened here is that Miracle got controlled, and it wasn't even neat, right? It was like it was a very scrappy controlling of Miracle at the start, to the point that they they took so long. The Lotus Orb arrived, the Doombringer had to doom himself, but just the fact that they controlled Miracle, even though it was a scrappy controlling of Miracle, that's that's everything. That's there isn't a route for OG to win fights without Miracle doing the heavy lifting in the fight. It's as simple as that. At the same time, if Miracle's able to play his game in a fight, he's going to win the fight for his team. So. What we're going to look at over and over again is which team is succeeding at either empowering or disempowering the Shadow Fiend. Well, right now it's in the hands of Empire to disempower him. They're looking really damn good. Spirit Breaker with a full BKB and now 2300 gold. I <laughs> think just realized what he did to that Black Dragon too. Put up on the hillside. The funny thing is, I, I, I'm, I'm willing to say at this point that no -Tail might be regretting going for the Lotus Orb because of the way the games worked out. The first usage looked really good, but if he had scaled into his usual build, the build he used yesterday with the Lincoln's Butterfly, maybe Scotty, like be an extra fighting hero, yeah. I think he'd feel more comfortable right now. Aloha Dance caught out. The Lich Aldi wants to be committed. Gonna bounce up a Queen of Pain. Ah, she's gonna get her TP cancelled. And this will be Aloha Dance dying. They really need this too because it's the gem of True Sight. Like Moon Meander, it looks like Crip bought him a new one. How many gems? We actually, we actually got three three gems on the field this game. Oh, just of that new one from Moon. Yeah, so earlier on I spoke about how it would be troubling if Lich caught up to the net worth of Lena. That's out of the question now again, but look at Aloha Dance. He is actually catching up to Moon Meander, and we've we got to say, like, his impact on this game has been, like, massive. Absolutely massive. At the start, he was the one doing all the reconnaissance works, the scouts, and the, the ganking, the, the warding. 
Then he picks up the mech, helps to win them a fight. Now the Guardian grieves, which is the reason that he didn't die in that gank is because he could use Guardian Griefs to take off the Night Stalker's silence. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is a hero that, as a support, I think is very difficult to to be effective, have a huge impact, and not just feel like, why didn't we pick a regular support son? And he's kind of got it to a T. Man, got to keep it up. This support Queen of Pain. I kind of fell in love with it when Alliance did it the other day. The other day, almost a week ago. Radiance bottom tower is under Looking attack. Looking uh, with every game and every team that keeps doing it. I know he. I know uh, it wasn't. Uh, it wasn't Alliance that started the trend. Radiance well, if you go far enough back, it's actually. I want to say it's actually a SEA thing, which is like kind of everything seems to start there. I know that's. Uh, I think it's Shatan. Is it, is it? No, it's not. It's it's Godo. Godo from. I don't know which team he was playing for at the time, but you should know him, right? He's Australian, isn't yeah, yeah. he? Yeah. Yeah. Go, go, um, go and Black Shatan. Yeah, so he Godot was the one who was doing support Queen of Pain like pretty like January this year already. I, I when I was casting some uh, SEA Dota, and it was kind of like laughed at by most people back then. But now it's becoming a thing. That was a long time ago, man. I don't think he even plays Dota anymore. Um, as a he moved on to League of Legends for a very long time. Well, that's I guess a loss to the Australian Dota scene, but but a gain to the Australian League scene. <laughs> The Australian Dota scene is fueled by Singapore anyway. Just look at yeah. space created. That's that's the top Australian team right now. Oh. Well, I mean, look, the Australian Dota scene is still better known and more impressive internationally than the South African Dota scene. <laughs> that, so, is, that is very, very true. There's a lot more people <laughs> that also talk about Australia, but normally it's the negative server issues which end up happening. But I, I kind of want to move on to something more positive. But then again, I don't know if this is actually positive. Alan purchased up the Agadim Scepter. Now, Doombringer has been changed. So, this Ags no longer does the increased damage. Is it still worth the purchase here for Silent? I'm not too sure. I'm also wondering if it's maybe not troubling that he's going to disable some of his own auras if he ends up doing himself, right? So that's it doesn't, it doesn't reflect the Ags, the Ags Doom though, right? Oh, uh, I don't actually know. I, I That's actually a really good question. I, well, I was assuming it did, but you're right, it might not. The, the assumption would be it would just reflect the Doom straight back again, but if it reflects the exact ability strength, it'd be like if Resolution has his Ags, do you get pure damage um, back, or do you get magical damage back? And how yeah, that's, damage I mean, these are very good questions about Lotus Orb that probably people haven't actually asked that much because the items like only recently been picked up more often. Silent. You're so low. It hasn't been that popular since it got added to the game. You can see Miracle twitching. I think Silent's he, he dropping really a bit low here, but I don't think they want to start on the Doombringer, <laughs> fair enough. You might have actually noticed that ping that came out from Fly. Fly pinged that Miracle and said, get back. Get back. There's no reason for OD to fight. Like, if they could fight from their high ground and wait for the Aegis to time out, they'll do it every single time. So the Aegis is just timed out. We've got 4 minutes and 20 seconds till he's up. So it's still going to be like half of the half of the 3 minute spawn timer. And the brew was pushing was up the top lane while all that was going on. Am I back? Hello? Hi, yeah, you're still here. It's, 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 it's Skype like dropped for a few seconds or something. I don't know. Okay. Anyway. I didn't, I didn't um, realize we lost you. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I was talking to myself a couple of seconds, but... Uh, Meander's gone for that uh, Octarine Core on Night Stalker. I don't know if you commented on that. Um... There you go. And that's interesting because it gives him the... Well, fly oh, <laughs> resolution. Well... I think that just gave us our answer. He w he was BKB resolution and took no damage when he lagoon yeah. bladed into the Lotus Orb. So then it just reflects the ability and not like the ability as used yeah. by the caster. If Fair enough. If it was the Ags up, he still would have taken the damage. I think that's reasonable. And it's funny enough if Lotus Orb get if people decide hey this item's not good enough, that would be like an interesting way to buff it, like just a small buff, like give it the Ags stuff as well when it reflects Ags things. But yeah, the, the thing I want to point out about Moon Meander deciding to go for that Octarine Core Agonim Scepter is that it kind of like solidifies the position that OG's in. This is not a Night Stalker that's okay, I need to shift into trying to be an extra carry. And to be honest, there's obviously costs of that. It's very difficult for Night Stalker to farm his way back into the game. It's not like he has a Midas. Um, he, if he started to try to be like some kind of physical DPS carry, would he ever get there reasonably? Would he not just be squandering funds? 
But Daddy buys the Octarian Corp just means he's trying to make it night all the time. There's only 10 second downtime on his ulti. He can reduce the vision of the enemy team, increase the vision of his own team. But it's still going to come down almost exclusively to Miracle when it comes to that damage output. Miracle, and, and actually, interestingly enough, Empire, because you've got your Winter Wyvern ulti that's going to say, <laughs> use your damage on each other. Um, you've got Lotus Orb to reflect things. You've got two Lotus Orbs to reflect things. Yeah. But beyond Empire damaging themselves, it's mostly Miracle. True. But then how do you damage into Miracle? He's finished up the Butterfly, he's got a Lincoln Sphere, he's got the Lotus Orb protection, now building into Satanic as well on this SF. He's just so damn difficult to hit. And you were bringing up before, like, where is the damage output coming out from Team Empire if it's not going to come from all this nuke damage? It's not going to come from physical attacks. Like, there's Queen of Pain almost to build into a Monkey King bar at this point to ensure damage into the Shadow Fiend. Same thing for the Doombringer. Like, you got the amplification coming out from the Pack Wolf aura, but he's also at the point now where he has to sell the Vlads for new items because he went for the Blink as his as his last major item before, it, like, to six slot himself up without taking out the Vlads. So now no the get into the smoke. Silence there, but where's the vision? There with the gem of true sign. Requiem of Souls from Miracle tries to go out nice and early, but Silence taking through most of the damage as Winter Wyvern gets destroyed by the Epic Blade. Miracle's damage out, but he can't finish the job over on Silence, and he's running out of teammates way too quickly. Give me that damage into the Queen of Pain. No, even that won't do the job. The Doom over on Miracle. He is stunned up, completely controlled, and Miracle is down for the count. There is the buyback available, and Notel instantly sending the spirelings to the top lane. He actually forgot to attack with them, so there's no pressure being applied up there. Empire just going to come for the mid, try and get a counter Rax now. It's really interesting, actually, that Empire, the approach in that fight was actually not to, oh, we just need to kill Miracle. It was like, let's kill some weak supports, and then nothing can keep him alive, and then he'll be easy to deal with. And looks like it's worked out. And I, I got to say, I, it's something I didn't say at the start of the draft, but I think it's always worth mentioning about the Lich pick. Lich can win you lanes and like get that extra value. But when you're talking about control at this stage in the game, it's it's not a support that gives a lot of control. Silent. Silence up a very long way. That Lich only just keeps going to work. It's all to bounce off. Mainly this is about keeping Team Empire off the racks. So that's all OG want to achieve with these buybacks. But Fly called out. He actually called Embrace Lotus Orb as well as Speared Up. And that allows him to turn for a quick Frost Blast to kill the Spirit Breaker. Broodmother needs to walk away but can't do it in time. Resolution standing his ground doing as much damage as he can. The BKB is going to run out pretty damn quickly. And now, well, OG... They don't want to chase this. They still have the advantage that Creep Wave is still pushing in through top. They still have the mid lane going their way, and they had to lose a Broodmother and an, and an SF. And, like, only the Broodmother to defend that. That's fine. Yeah, it's... I mean... Miracle didn't have to use his buyback. Very, very positive sign, I would say. But over and over, we get the same story of... If you remember how the fights looked when they were going really well for OG, the mid lane, round about here, um... It's when the Winter Wyvern uses his ulti to initiate, and the person gets ulti dies immediately, gets burst down. And they were killing resolution like that over and over again, but this fight starts with the, the, the Winter Wyvern ulti on the Doom, and Doom does not die during the ulti. And unfortunately for OG, the only hard lockdown they have on their team is crit's ulti. That's it. So... It's, it's likely that in terms of controlling the fight, things will fall out of their hands in a fight where they start the fight with the with the Winter's Curse and don't kill the Snake Curse. It's just like, I, I want to say that's some kind of, as a rule of thumb, they're usually going to lose those kinds of fights. Maybe they can get a little bit more damage out with their Chrysalis freshly purchased over on the SF. And this is Miracle sacrificing all forms of buyback for all these items too. He understands that he, they need to get that instant kill and he's the method to do such a thing. They also know that Roshan is up, so they can get that Agassi model. But again, who do you even give it to? Do you drop that thing on Miracle? Do you just give it over to the Broodmother? Maybe the bad choice here? This is going to be a fight, for sure. Well, they'll give it a shot. Wyvern's got the curse up, but already Roshan's down. It's going to go the way of no tell. So they're up and ready to fight. Sun going to get uh, control up a little bit. The Splinter Blast actually not coming out from crit. 
Just that basic range attack. Vasana's already in half of his life. Triggers the BKB. The Charger come on the Night Stalker. He needs to actually get this Darkness off to actually help out the rest of his team. But Miracle stands his ground fly. The Lich only bouncing around doing work, but Miracle still down. Laguna Blade able to hit it so hard into that Shadow Fiend. And Crit isolated from the rest of his team. The Broodmother's trying to fight up against Silent, but he's doomed up and he just can't do anymore. It's a double kill arriving for Aloha Dance. The Broodmother, Aegis Immortal, will bring him back to life again. Lotus Orb's trying to protect him as much as they can, but there's just no protecting this. It's a triple kill for the support Queen of Pain, and it is Empire taking another huge fight. Even if they don't get the Aegis, even if they don't get Roshan, take, what's that now, the third fight in a row against OG? Yeah, and support Queen of Pain has finished a hex, by the way, that's... I mean, you're not a support anymore. <laughs> you're an our core. Um, I gotta say, it's... The game, the way it's turned out has become really easy for Empire to win fights. I mean, you could see what happened there. Crit actually got off a really good Winter's Curse. On resolution, a hero they can kill. And there were three, three of his allies attacking him at some point, I think, or two at least. But Shadow Fiend got controlled, and if he's not attacking the person who's cursed, they're just not gonna die. Yeah. That's so the job for Empire is that much easier. Like someone take care of Shadow Fiend while we're cursed. That's that's like the bottom line for winning a fight. Look at Empire trying to capitalize on the situation as much as they possibly can. The cold slowing down the attack from Silent, but they're not fully ready to go. And with the Assault Cure Ars now freshly arriving over on Flo, they've got the negative armor against the buildings too, so Empire, they take out the full mid racks, they get the melee on the top as well. And this gives Empire such great lane control. The Broodmother cannot keep repelling this kind of damn that this kind of push from Empire. He doesn't have these necros, he went for the Assault Cure Ars, Which I can also understand, like it's just racking up the team fights, allowing them when they do finally get into the Empire base, they could do some good, good damage. That just doesn't exist right now. Also note that Miracle dropped his, hel his uh, Helm of the Dominator, and he's picked up T's instead, that was saved by OG during that last Roshan. Yeah, I, I mean, it's that instant heal instead of the overtime heal, it's definitely going to be more crucial in trying to win a fight. It's, I, I do feel like we go back to the stage where, Brood, where No Tail first picked up his Lotus Orb and we were commending it and saying, wow, it looked so great in the first fight. And I, and I said earlier, like, maybe at this point he'd regret it and prefer to go for the Lincolns. And really the extension of that thinking is that I think OG are in a much better position if once they had the lead, they just won the game economically, like yeah. extended their lead, controlled the map, got lots of farm. As soon as they made the game about fights, it's like Empire's comfort zone, not just because they draft, but also because of the way Empire likes to play. They, they're they pretty good at figuring out how to win a team fight. They, they struggle to figure out how to deal with the enemy team, split pushing, splitting the map, controlling the map. But OG, I think, about halfway through this game, just started playing into their hands, and they've paid for it. They have, and they're going to pay for it even more. This Doombringer is immortal. He's got a level 3 Doom. If he gets this off on someone with the help of the Octarine, his restoration... Between Octorincor as well as having his Scorched Earth, it just through the roof. I, I, yeah, he's... How do you how do you even kill this Doombringer? You talk about like, focusing these originally cursed targets, but that's just you 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 need to curse all of Empire right now. That's the only way to make it happen. Hit them all with the like a point blank range Requiem. But maybe that was also something else we should have looked at during that bottom fight. The fact that Miracle at the start of the fight takes the time out to channel out the Requiem of Souls from a safer vantage point to make sure he gets it off during the fight while the curse is happening, so he's not even attacking the target while the curse is on. Well... The fights that is is could very possibly end this game is about to happen, I would say. Brood's not here. Okay, now he is. TP's back. And Nice Stalker. Well, he'll trigger off the darkness to start with. Queen of Pain getting harassed down. Triggers off the Greaves, so it's able to bl blink itself away. It's uh, another thing that I think is overlooked. Night Stalker, when he's ulting, he's reducing enemy vision. And that, I think, makes a lot less of a difference when you're in a big 5v5 team fight, Because you only need to be able to see a small area around yourselves. Whereas if the game was more split up and it's kind of pick off and split farm orientated, um, that's a way in which the Night Stalker can control the game passively. Four, How the four staff went, uh, went to Wyvern instead of going for the blink dagger. 
Yeah, I, to be honest, that's as much to get a good win to Skorstov as it is to just like help one of his teammates, I would say, because I don't think he's been struggling to get good curses. I think that most of his curses have been pretty damn good. And I think Crits had a great game, all in all. Uh, early on, when he was defending towers, when he was just like creating that space for his team, when he went and lane top against Doombringer, um, his Winter's Curse has been fine. It's just this, it's too difficult for his team when he gets the Winter's Curse to do what needs to be done. To kill the person, Miracle has to attack them. For that, he has to expose himself to everything. Yeah. And this right now. OG need to win one big fight and just push the map. That's what they want. They actually. Like, just even force buybacks. I know they probably can't win the game with one big fight. I need something more than that. They're about to come in. So, right now, bizarrely enough, almost nobody has buyback. Only Spirit Break and Nightstalk and Bayon at buyback in this game. The SS is pretty damn close, though. Like, he's only 10 gold off. Yeah, same with Silent. There's a there's a bunch of people very close. It's just, it's just, it's just kind of funny that for this, like, 30 second window, a lot of people couldn't buy back. Just like how it affects. Imagine the fight happens there and people die, and then it's like how much different it could be compared to when the fight is going to happen and all these people that are a couple hundred gold away from buyback will probably have it by the time the fight starts. And yeah, this this push coming from Empire at the top. I'm wondering if OG really feel the need to defend it. Like it's a range rank on top. It's not really that critical to hold on to. They can keep that pressure going, and okay, so Crit's gonna end up selling his soul ring on bot lane. He doesn't want to sell the smoke, obviously. They really need those. And he's have a TP back to base. Ghost up is a nice thing for him as well, but it's only gonna stop resolution from beating the crap out of him. Yeah, so I, I want to give Empire some credit because earlier on I said that maybe they lack some of the qualities teams like Vega and Virtus Pro have in terms of like controlling the aggression and being more calculated. And I think it's commendable that Empire have not forced the high ground once this game. They, the only times they've pushed, it's after they've already won a fight outside of the base. I think it's commendable to recognize that what, even though you have really good plans for winning fights, you get a lot more difficulties when you're trying to force the enemy high ground. The positional advantage they have, the way that they can dictate, you know, control the fights, where they can stand and know that they're safe, it's a big deal. And I, th I think it's actually very smart of Empire to take the conservative approach, wait for the next uh, rush, actually, probably, before they, they try any kind of forcing of the high ground. <laughs> Up from the wall. Empire understand they can't force high ground. OG understand now they can't force the fights, even if they built for it. They, and both teams just taking their time to get these critical items back up again. Like, I'm watching SF now. What's he got? He's actually got the Satanic Recipe. So Miracle is just buying out for this. Once he got that Satanic Recipe, his, his, his ability to stand during the fight oh, is so going better. On crits. Maybe, okay, yeah, that charge is coming on crit. The Void will cancel the Spirit Breaker charge. He goes for the BKB pushback on the Night Stalker, but then you realize the damage coming in from Miracle. The Lotus Orb will protect the Night Stalker and the Curse. It's on Sam, but he got his BKB off, and the Broodmother's also going down. Resolution is the damage output. The Nightmare timing, not the perfect sync, but it's still going to help get the kill over on Fly. His Lich Halty, no fear, almost dying to it. It bounces back up. He has the BKB to protect himself. Miracle grabs off a double kill on this fight. Now he moves over to Sam. No, no BKB to protect, protect him. They do get the Doom on the ESF, but you've already lost your Doombringer. Without that BKB, he didn't have the protection needed. And the Night Stalker's on the chase. He won't be able to reach a Loha Dance who just blinks himself up to safety. And OG, this is the question mark. Where'd they go from here? Roshan could have spawned up, but he won't spawn for another two minutes. So they can check for this. In fact, I think that's what Empire's Courier is coming down here to do. Yep, it comes in, sees that Roshan's not there. And then just backs the hell out, so they understand they don't have to face up against OG, they don't have to buy back on their Doom. I think that fight, if you consider all the buybacks, is probably a, a small win for OG. It's it's not huge. Um, Broodmother had to use buyback, so did Lich, and I think just the Spirit Break on the side of Empire. Correct. Um, so it's a bigger buyback on the side of OG, but they do get better kills. They uh, probably want OG, to force They could force the bottom buyback. lane. Pop into the bottom lane. If they can get the buybacks out from Empire, then it makes it, it, makes it really worthwhile. Do they... Are they able to, to safely escape once the buybacks happen? If they, if they do happen, or is Empire just going to drop their axes and rather not even bother with the buybacks? You've still got a satanic SF. It looks like Empire's just going to let it go. That's, that's so big for OG. 
Because now they've only got one lane to finish, really. Yeah, it's... I gotta say, that fight's going OG's way, even if it's not in a huge way. It's that Spirit Breaker effect, because... Empire have been winning fights where they start in a controlled fashion, and there they charge crit, they want to start on him. He gets forced off the way, and then suddenly they're improvising, no and while stab. they're gonna smoke straight. No fear stab, walks forward, there's your curse, already the bay on the sidelines, and Empire, the choice, do you want to engage? The answer is yes, Thailand, men jumping into four of them, straight the front lines, the Laguna play will help the kill off crit, but that Lich only bouncing up again, it's not gonna come back over to Wall Sound, the Fiend's Crypt keeping the Night nice Stalker out this fight. No tell, can't fish job over on the corp, just blinks away, but Resolution taking so much damage from Miracle, and SF gets himself the crit, and Silent also being chased down, Miracle with a double kill, and that could have been the game deciding fight right there, Silent's been chased down, he'll drop for the count, 88 seconds on the, on the, on the sidelines, buyback is available, but no doom is up for him, and Miracle's making a run for the top lane. They want to be able to get this top tier 3 tower and potential mega creeps. And there's your buyback. Lincoln Spear already true. Miracle in trouble. The silence on Queen of Pain lets the ulti go. And Miracle Lotus Orb turns on the Satanic. Tries to push the damage back in and silent. He's too far forward. He can't afford to die right now. Resolution with the double sound buying the mushy to space. But Empire, can you fall back this far? The Broodmother still has to turn around for another fight. Queen of Pain, there's no Grease available. They can't shake off that silence. The top racks is being chipped away, and now it's actually gone. Miracle's damage is too much. Resolution will be able to get the Laguna Blade kill. Force Mega Creeps now, OG. Buyback still available for the SF. They're going to lose no tail as well. He can lose up an attempt to kill an Aloha Dance, but he'll be unsuccessful. And Empire to scramble the defense, approaching the one hour mark. But at least don't have a brood mother on the field for over a hundred seconds. Yeah, I. I mean, this this empire can still win this game, but the odds are now stacked against them because they're facing mega creeps. Um, w w heroes are sufficiently farmed that I think a big bites one empire they could definitely go down, and the creeps alone are probably not going to beat them. I got to say, it's 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 kind of ironic that a couple minutes after I commanded empire for showing discipline, not forcing high ground when they couldn't, they've lost two fights in a row. Which showed lack of discipline. They lost the fight at the mid lane where Spirit Breaker charged crit, and he got away. And instead of you know retreating, Empire were like, oh, we'll just Empire keep forcing it. And then the same thing happened. Ban gets picked off with their secret shop, and instead of going, oh, okay, our Ban got picked off, can't do anything. They just kind of YOLO into the enemy team, and it looks like now they're going for a kind of last last ditch attempt, which I think that's fair enough when you're against Mega Creeps. Well, um, if, if they if they can win this fight, like they don't have to deal with the Broodmother, they got all their big abilities up, and they're actually just going for the tier 4 towers. They get the buyback out from the SF, and maybe this is the, get time to, the time to retreat. Like, you are up against Megas, but that SF still does huge amounts of damage, and they, it's proven they couldn't control them. Well, OG are very happy to stall. They didn't have the Doom when they couldn't control the Shadow Fiend. That Satanic was everything in that fight, and with the Doom up, it's possible they could control him, but the curse is... There is the curse. Yep. It's over on the Doombringer. The nightmare timing as she protects the Doombringer, allowing to get the BKB off. Resolution is hecked up for now, but Miracle front lines looking for the kill on Bane. Gonna be able to find it. Now moved over towards Resolution. Find that crit. Hitting Resolution so hard. And do they have a follow up with a double Sonic Waves from a low hard dance? SF's down. The Brood's coming back up again, but Empire, they still are. They don't have the numbers. Not with the buybacks available for OG, and they're buying back inside their own base, which means instantly back to the engagements. The Nice Orca to the Empire's front line. Base. Empire they have base. to be able to disengage. Resolution's going back because their throne is currently being brought down. Resolution trying to defend it. Silence, he's just being chipped away. He'll end up dropping. This is GG. This is the game. There were, there were so many fights in this game where all they had to do was kill Miracle. And there they killed him and didn't even have buyback. But it's like... <laughs> if if any other fight that had happened, they'd killed Miracle without buyback and probably won the game. They do it when their base is dying to Mega Creeps. It's just too late. Uh, this is this is a great start to a wonderful series. It's the four best of three coming your way for this semi-final. We'll be having ourselves the matchup directly after this one. OG, if they play the first place match or the grand final, they need to play out their games tonight before the majors begin. And uh, right now, it looks like OG might be setting themselves a date with Team Liquid. Can they take the second game in the series? We're going to find out, having a short break, and we'll be back here to serve you up game two.